impressive as some of these, these demonstrations um, have been, um, they're not as far out as uh, the one we're, we're going to show you next uh, and will be our last demo uh, for the day. Uh, in fact, um, when I first saw this technology, um, I thought of that famous quote from Arthur C. Clarke that says, any significantly advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I think you'll, you'll agree that that, that quote applies very strongly in, uh, in this case. Um, what uh, we're about to talk about and demonstrate at least in early form, is this notion of programmable matter. Many of you may have read the Michael Crichton book, Prey, uh, where he talks about these, these shape-shifting entities that consist of millions or billions of tiny, intelligent uh, nanobots working together to you know, create objects of various shapes and, and sizes. Uh, it's pretty mind-boggling, and it's, it's sort of harder to describe verbally than to see it in action, so let's watch it. Shape-shifting materials. Sounds pretty fantastic. Uh, but let's actually take a look at some real shape-shifting material that's in development. I'd like to bring out Jason Campbell from uh, the Intel Research Center in Pittsburgh. Jason, Jason, great to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. I trust we're not going to change shape on you here. You never know. I think he's still in Pittsburgh. Oh, jeez, that's scary. <laughs> First, I've got robots handing me apples. Mind control. You're the one who set the agenda. Next right. 40 years. I learned my lesson. So, you know, tell us a little bit um, about, you know, this technology and, and how we're actually, you know, at work trying to create it. You know, it's a really challenging vision. It's sort of not an incremental research vision, but we're making steady progress on it. And so I'm becoming more and more convinced we're actually going to do it. That that uh, video will be reality. My estimates of how long it's going to take have gone from 50 years down to a couple more years. Ah, that's the exponential that's moving towards the singularity. And that's been over the course of the four years I've worked on this project. Okay. So should we take a look at some Let's of the look artifacts? Look at some hardware I brought with me. Okay. And a lot of these uh, things that we're looking at we built in concert with our collaborators at Carnegie Mellon as well as AFRL. So, all right. There's credit to them where credit's due. Sure. You know, in the video we saw uh, catoms depicted as spheres. We call each one of the elements that form these shapes a catom. Um, the, the C comes from platronics. I guess we should platronics. Another, another name of the name that we have for this technology. Mm -hmm. um, this is an example of one of our electronics, photonics, platronics. Yeah. All right. That's right. Really programmable morphology, the ability to change shapes. Okay. So uh, this is one of our early research prototypes. You know, I said we were, we're aiming for spheres eventually in order to make the task easier to start with. We took a cross section of the sphere, so we have cylinders. Okay, so um, it's really a 2D. This is a 2D equivalent. Yeah. It has a microprocessor, it has some memory, and it has a bunch of electromagnets around the outside here. Now, if we look at two slightly later prototypes here, you can see they've got a large number of electromagnets around the outside, and uh, the magnets let them roll around each other's perimeter. And that's the fundamental sort of actuation mechanism, the way we get these things to move, is rolling across each other's surfaces. Okay. Now, electromagnetic, electromagnetics may make sense at this scale. What, if, what, if, what happens if we go smaller? That's absolutely the right question. Electromagnetics let us build something at this scale, but really we want to move to electric fields. And so we, we learned as much as we could here, and then we went, if you go to the next slide, I think, okay? Um, we built a number of tubes that I didn't bring any with me with. Um, each one of these tubes is actuated by electric fields. And in fact, right now, we're trying to build a tube that will carry the control circuitry that allows it to move itself around. And hopefully this fall, we'll have a tube with electric field actuators and control circuits rolling around. And size-wise, this is? One millimeter millimeters. across. These are about 10 millimeters long, one millimeter diameter. Around. It's already getting pretty small. It's already quite small. For electric field actuators, you need things to be small. You need the dimensions to be small. So we don't have an option. We have to get small. With all this nanotechnology, you can pack a we lot of pack parts. A tremendous amount of, uh, for instance, transistors into that space. I'm not as worried about the number of transistors we fit on it as the okay. issues. But let me show you something now that we have never shown anyone in public before. These were, we're starting to learn how to build the geometry behind 3D catoms. And these are uh, silicon dioxide hemispheres. On the, you can see a, a hemisphere in each square opening on this, on this substrate here. 
as I move the flashlight around, you can see the reflection of the flashlight in the, the sphere surfaces. Um, these were built in by Egal Cherko from one of our Jerusalem fabs. And what's important here is we need to get the geometry right as well as getting all the components like a processor and, and actuators. So this is, yeah. a, this is a small glass hemisphere. Let me, let me give you a sense of just how small. These are a, a little bit thinner than half the thickness of a dime. But if I zoom out in this camera view, you can see we put next to that array of hemispheres uh, a penny here on the side. Wow, they're really small. That'll give you a sense for the, the scale that we're working at now. And you, have, you, you should have a real, a real impression that if we built something out of millions of these, like pixels on your display screen, the individual dots would disappear. And you so, see the so, whole. So how big would an individual pattern be? Uh, probably on the order of a tenth of a millimeter. 100 microns or so is, is a good initial size. Now, it, it's sort of like your television screen. Over time, you'd like it to get better. <laughs> like them to get smaller, higher resolution. But again, even at that scale, plenty of room for, for logic. Tons of room, tons of room. In fact, some modern processors can already fit in that. So the video had, you know, this very powerful vision of objects, big objects that, that change shape. What are the sort of things you're, you're looking at? Well, so there, in the, in the near term, sort of high value applications might include 3D visualization for things like medicine. We've got some fundamentally 3D, 3D data, say, from MRI scanners or CAT scanners or ultrasound allow practitioners to really touch it to prepare for, say, a surgery they're about to do or to make a better diagnosis. So it's not just that you're looking at slices of that data, you're actually seeing it in 3D, you can change its scale. Sure. Um, and how about more everyday? On the everyday side, one of the things I'm most excited about is, is replacing the electronic devices I carry with me. You know, my cell phone is always too big to fit comfortably in my pocket. And it's always too small to fit comfortably on my on my head when I'm making. Uh oh, I can see where this is going. Really too small to do email or texting with. So I brought a couple of shapes with me to talk about that today. Um, these two, we have the blue one instead. These two shapes here uh, are just they're just made out of plastic right now. Oh, okay. They're not about to. <laughs> they're not about to change shape. Uh, but they uh, could be made out of the same number of atoms. In both cases, two million atoms, each one of which is 200 microns across. So at their smallest, packing them all the way together, I could, I could have a, a small shape like this that fits easily in my pocket. Right. If, I, if I'm getting ready to send an email, I might pull it out of my pocket and convert it into a large sort of mid-size device where I have a keyboard and a screen. And as we saw in the, in the video, uh, you could give them the, the ability, I guess, to turn on red, green, or blue. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are a number of ways to control their appearance. Okay, so you can think of them like pixels on the device. So this would wow. actually be uh, a 720p display. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Now, we just sort of, I don't know, not even unfold, just sort of reshape yeah. itself. That's right, more fluidly. And when you're done with it, maybe you, you morph it into a sphere and drop it in your backpack oh. or into a bracelet and put it on your wrist. So I just have one bracelet, it can say live strong or whatever. You know, and it could, it could say something new every day. Every day. <laughs> just what I wanted. <laughs> okay. Programmable matter. Jason Campbell. Thank you Thanks very so much. much.